Welcome back to the special edition of Moneyline. Today we're speaking to Margaret Hirsch of Hirsch's. So you meet a lot of entrepreneurs mm. um, along the way and I, I know that you've in fact built a number of entrepreneurs over the years. That's my joy. When they talk to you yes. um, about what they face, yes. or what are some of the things that they raise with you? Well the most important thing they always say is I haven't got enough money. And I say to them, the, real, the reason you're in the position you're in is because God wants you to go out and make the money. But he ain't going to throw it at you. Everybody thinks that it's just going to fall out the sky. It doesn't work like that. And I always tell them, anything you get for nothing will be taken away from you anyway. The only money you'll ever get to keep is what you earn. So you have to make sure that you earn it. Because if somebody gives it to you, you'll find that a little while down the way, it's just gone. So they just think it's going to happen, and it doesn't going to happen. But it's a long, hard haul. And what happens to most people is as soon as they hit the first obstacle, they give up. And I say, God gives you those obstacles to be able to know that you can get over them. Because once you've got over that obstacle, you can always go on and know that there always will be another one. Because you've got to remember, life is not a destination, it's a journey. You have to carry on with this journey. And you will always get obstacles along the way. But as you get over them, it gets easier. The obstacles get more difficult, but it gets easier to get over them. And when you look around you, you see a lot of opportunities because you, you hear a lot, of, um, a lot of people saying, well, I don't know what to do with myself. There aren't yeah. any opportunities. There are so many opportunities. And you know that our greatest joy and our greatest blessing living in this country is this is the land of wealth and opportunity. When you think about it, England's had their day. They colonized everybody. They, they took the money. And now where are they? Look at America. America was the land of milk and honey. But look at it today. It's not the country it was. Africa is where it's at, and we're in the right place at the right time. We are the gateway to Africa. We are where it's going to all happen from. It's not going to happen anywhere else. This is where it's going to happen. We are the breadbasket of the world, this continent, and we are right in the right spot where we can only go to the rest. So we, are, we, we could not be in, born in a better era than we are now. We could not be living in a better country than we are now, and things could not be better for us than they are now. But you've got to remember, life is what you make it. You can make a fantastic life here. I've made the, my best life is here. I could live anywhere in the world. I have uh, businesses in, in America, I have businesses in England. I've been all over the world and I choose to live here because this is by far the best country. No, you can, and especially for a woman, you couldn't choose a better land than this <laughs> to live in. <laughs> Why? Why for women specifically? For women, because we all have helpers. I could not do my job without my domestic workers. I have, as you know, I have homes in Durban, Cape Town and Joburg. I have the most wonderful domestic workers who do everything for me. And he has Gugu's point of fact. And I mean, every, for us, it's just so lucky. And I've just started a competition for the Domestic Worker of the Year competition because our domestic workers are an unsung heroes in this country. We, as women, could not do our jobs without our domestic workers at home. I could not be doing the job that I'm doing now. I don't even pack my suitcase. My ladies that work for me pack my suitcase for me. They know what I want to wear. They know if I've got a function to pack long dress and gold sandals. They know everything about me, and they work with me, boy, this is the place to be. I don't have to come home and cook and clean and wash and iron. It's all done for me. Nowhere in the world could, uh, could you have. You've also launched a Businesswoman of the Year award. Yes, I've got my, you know, I was so fortunate to win Businesswoman of the Year for 2012, yes. uh, South African Entrepreneur Businesswoman of the Year. So um, I realized that that really catapulted my own career to a new height. And I thought there's so many people, you know, us as women, we don't want to put ourselves forward. I would never put myself forward. My friend Glenda put me forward. And I mean, that changed my whole life. And it gives you real credibility because now you not only have this to live up to, you can't let all the other businesswomen down. So you, you just take yourself to a whole new level. And I thought, how would I have started if it wasn't for Glenda? So I thought what I would do is I'd start my own Businesswoman of the Year competition, where no matter how little your business is, how, no matter how small it is, when I tell you I've got small businesses who've, who've come in, my winner from Amschlanger last year is a motor mechanic, a lady motor mechanic, can you believe that? Wow. I have ladies who just have businesses putting eyelashes onto other ladies and they're making a fortune. I have the most incredible business people coming through saying, this is the business that I do, can I enter? And I say, of course. And they enter and then we choose in each area, each where each of my stores are, we choose a winner every month 
and then at the end of the year we culminate in our Business Women of the Year Award. And then those women I put forward to Business Women South Africa to go and take their business and then they enter that competition wow. as well. Yeah. And that must be quite gratifying when you watch them grow. For me, it's fantastic. And you know, that the thing is, they come to me. I mean, I had a little photographer who's working in um, Pretoria, and we put her forward. She said, Margaret, my business has taken off like it never had. She said, I've been working for three years, slogging my guts out and just breaking even. And she said, from when I won that, I was in the local paper. Um, my business has just taken off, and I could not be happier. You, you're, you're a believer in, in, in wealth generation, yes. right? That we should actually celebrate our successes. Absolutely. Why do you think that we tend to, particularly women, I think, and this is a personal opinion, we dim our lights? No, it's not about money. No, I'm not trying to chase fame. You know, as, as children, when you think how I was brought up, children should be seen and not heard. Speak when you're spoken to. That's a very old-fashioned way of doing it. You know, the world has changed so much in those, since those times. When you think we didn't even have television in those days, you know. So the world has changed a lot and people have changed. How do I teach my grandchildren now? Stand in your own strength. Speak, when you speak, speak out. Because today, if you speak out, people think you're intelligent. If you sit with a mouthful of teeth, they think you're stupid, you know. So um, it's a completely different world out there. And I think also as women, we're taught to be sweet little girls. We always must be sweet and nice and kind. To be in business today, you have to be tough. Don't let anybody bluff you. You can be sweet and nice and kind and be successful in business. It's just tough out there. You've got to be tough. You've got to be quicker than the rest. You've got to be faster than the rest. You've got to be ahead of the pack. So um, I think as women, we can also hide behind that. Oh, you know, I can't do that because I'm a woman, which, which is, it's, it's, a, it's a defense mechanism. I, I always say I can do that because I'm a woman. I can get away with, with things that a man wouldn't get away with. Thank you so much for watching this special edition of A Money Line from me, Kim Gabadeli and the team. Goodbye.